David with Ultimate Survival Tips, and I was walking around Blade Show, and I found Stephen here of Habless Bush Tools. Bush Tools. I'm really excited. It takes a lot to give me goosebumps about a knife, but he was showing me his Bush Tool, and this may be the ultimate wilderness survival blade. So, Stephen, can you can you show the guys the Bush Tool? Absolutely. And uh, I'll start by saying that the reason that we decided to call it the Bush Tool instead of the bush blade or bush knife is because it's more than just a knife. Okay. It, uh, it incorporates features that allow you to do multiple things that would be really beneficial in the primitive skills mindset. Uh, the real idea behind it was to make a single tool that could do a lot of those skills but not become clunky and overburdened with different features that might get in the way of other things. Uh, basically I wanted to do a a basic traditional shape knife. Uh, we did want the chopping ability of a uh, tomahawk or a small hatchet, so we did do a curved cutting edge on it. Uh, that gives you better bite when you chop into a tree. Also, it will give you better performance when cutting meat or vegetation. Um, it is what I call a pseudo scandy. We do a scandy top grind and then come back and put a secondary bevel. That not only makes it a more durable edge, but makes it easier for field maintenance. Be correct. And that's what you need. You need a sharp edge, but you need a strong edge for exactly that will last. Okay. And uh, we do our sharpen ours at a 27 degree angle. Okay. It's a good utility angle. You can skin a deer with it, chop plants, uh, work with rope. It'll cut really anything you can throw at it. The idea behind it was there again. We've got the curved cutting edge. Uh, we did do a spear point top point that is in line with the handle so that if you're boring a hole to start a fire board or if you just need to cut a small hole out of a piece of wood maybe to make a flute or That's something awesome. to entertain yourself. Nobody else yourself. is thinking about that. That's awesome. Exactly. It is a spear top point so there again you can use it to stab. If you needed to get behind a piece of bark to work it off of a tree that gives you some actual power to get behind it. So you have the, you have the point of a spear but you have the strength of like a drop blade. Exactly. Very utilitarian blade shape. Okay. And that's basically yeah. what I did was take features of knives I really liked, but then I totally mix them together. To that point, what I'm calling the anvil here is used for when you're using a hammer stick to baton yes. through a piece of wood. Clip point style knives are excellent at batoning because of that clip, mm -hmm. but yet they're weak at the tip. So what I did was basically overlaid that profile to give the anvil. So now you get all that directed force. It also gives you a place to get a secondary handhold if you're going to be scraping or if you're going to do real fine work, you can even choke up here and have somewhere for your hand to lock into where it doesn't slide out. You've got, I mean, you're going almost out to the tip with the same width of your of your spine. Let's just turn it that way. So, so you have that almost a full width right out to the point on mm -hmm. the spine, which makes it really, really strong. The back edge we've left squared off so that it can be used as a square edge scraper if you ever needed to finish out the back of a bow or anything like that where you need to do some fine finish scraping. Uh, our fire rod notch here is sized to fit our 5 uh flint rod. So this is your fire rod too? Mm -hmm. okay. We, uh, we co-designed it with Exotac Industries, okay. uh, but the notch will hit the rod in three different areas instead of just a single point of contact and also it catches the sparks here and throws them in a straight point where it makes sure that it hits it That's on your beautiful. tender. That's beautiful. Man. Thank you. Uh, also this will work to scrape down the hardwood four shafts of an arrow that way you can round one out make sure that it's not going to wobble and fly. You didn't tell me about that before. Yeah, that's one of those. <laughs> I keep, I remember things <laughs> that, that I've done with it. Uh, at the back of the blade here, it dead ends into a uh, integrated guard, so you're not going to have to worry about sliding up on it if you're getting aggressive with it. The nice point about that is it allows you to use it in a chef setting where you could do food prep, fine chop tender in order to get a better chance of catching a spark. Nice. Uh, and really, this top edge is easier to sharpen also because you don't have a dead end that you're trying to start from. Yep. So you can fully use this edge. And if you ever do wear it to the point where it gets difficult to sharpen, you can do a traditional Scandi style sharpen where you lay it flat on the stone 
reestablish that, put your secondary bevel back on, and you can keep going until you're out of metal. We did a G10 handle. G10 is one of the most durable materials out there. In my opinion, it's also one of the most beautiful, and it, we give a lifetime guarantee. I actually thought one. that was wood. Yeah, I mean, you did such a nice job with it. Thank you very much. Great material for us. Uh, we put two fong holes in it. That allows you to either attach a stick to make it a longer chopping tool where you could use it like a small axe, or you could also add an L-shaped stick to it where you can use it as a scythe to gather grass nice. or uh, tall weeds in order to make shelter, uh, cordage, anything that you need long fibers for. Uh, it is a hatchet shaped handle so you can get different grips on it to increase or decrease your control and power. Did an extended pommel on it so that you can use it to pound on things. Uh, there again, breaking up bark, breaking up fibers. Uh, left the edge of it slightly burred so that you can use it to scrape out spoons okay. or bowls. So you uh, didn't round that end, you left it nice and Exactly, nice and it, it's off. not sharp, but it does have a little bit of, oh, yeah. it can yeah, it's grab. It's got some bite, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Oh, and How long uh, did it take you to come up with this? From the first version of it to production version, about two years of sketches and- That's awesome. Making Prototype them out of, yeah, cardboard knives, wooden knives, switching into steel. Uh, so you weren't done until you were happy? There were two of them that I evaluated for over six months before I ever made a production one. Okay. So uh, it, it truly became my perfect knife before I offered it to anyone. Sorry, and, I, inter I interrupted you. No, you're there. fine. Absolutely. It's just uh, exciting. Yeah, and it's a 3 16th inch thick steel, and nice. it has a large flat here, so you could use it to bust open nuts. If you're you setting a tent, it? you can set tent pegs. And that's, I mean, the balance of this is... is is really it's got a nice balance and it does have that mass right it's even really though it's a large blade the the balance point is half an inch in front of that tube so it's right where the handle ends so you don't feel tip heavy or nice. uh handle you don't heavy. Feel, yeah you don't it, feel it, it it feels neutral it's, in the hand yeah. and uh it is 1095 high carbon steel professionally heat treated to a rockwell of 57 nice. every blade's tested uh, they're crowd treated twice, so they're tougher. We do a phosphorus gun blue finish to help discourage rust. Since it is a carbon steel product, it can rust, but with proper care, it'll just develop a nice natural patina and become even more individualized to the person who owns it. Uh, patina is a basically a beautiful rust. It's when the surface of the steel will oxidize, but not truly rust. Okay. and it develops a character of its own. Uh, it's kind of, sometimes they're shiny, sometimes they're a lot brown, but it's a natural protection. As long as the patina's on there, you won't have any rusting go further into the metal. And it's developed from acids in the uh, plants that you're cutting, and also the fats and meats that you okay. cut. So everything will add to the character of the knife as it ages. Okay. Kind of like a cast, cast, good cast iron. Exactly. Band. The older it gets, the, older the better it, it performs. We do offer the bush tool with either a Kydex sheath. Okay, that's nice. And it does have the loop for our fire steel. Okay. And so we also right, have it goes in just right like that. Mm -hmm. Nice. And then we do have a leather option also. Uh, you so, get your choice of sheath at one hundred ninety nine dollars. One ninety nine. Okay. Mm -hmm. So since I've seen this, mm -hmm. where's yours? Oh. Where's yours? Mine is right here. Okay. Now, this is an awesome setup because Steven showed me this earlier and but let's do another video. And let's just talk about let's talk about the sheath and kind of like your survival pack here that you have attached to it. Sure. Is that, is that cool? Absolutely. You got time for me? Oh yeah. Okay. I've All got right. nothing but time. Awesome. All right. So we'll come <laughs> back and we'll do that. For your convenience, I've included links to Steven's knife and website, hablosbushtools.com, in the video description on YouTube. And check out my second interview with Steven will show us one of the coolest knife sheets survival kits I've ever seen. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And for more gear reviews, survival tips, and survival news, check out ultimatesurvivaltips.com. While you're there, grab our monthly survival e-mag, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter to get the latest news and be the first to hear about the great gear giveaway contests we have planned. Okay, this is David. I hope to see you on the other side, and remember, be prepared, because you never know.